<laughs> AKJ checking in. Do the stuff that nobody's doing. My son, he was like five, six at the time, literally passing me the bandit sign. Uh -huh. That was our <laughs> weekend out. We got $80,000 on closing day up front for construction, and we never saw any of it. You know, you really got to understand that there are levels to this. Today, we have a special guest, Eddie Lopez, who is an expert on flipping houses. He is the president and co-founder of EKJ Real Estate LLC. Eddie, how you doing, my man? I'm doing well, man. You know, thanks a lot for having me, Marco. I know we've known each other for a long time now. It's a Absolutely. pleasure yeah. and an Absolutely. honor to be considered, man. Thanks for the invite. I no, really thank you, man. It. Yeah, thank you for, you know, taking your time out of uh, this, uh, your hectic schedule just to be here and share some information for our listeners, bro. With all the pleasure in the world, man. Yeah, man. So why don't we jump into it? So what was your life like before real estate and flipping houses? Yeah, sure. So a little bit about myself. Um... Eddie Lopez, I'm part one of a two-man team. I'm the, you know, I'm the brains. My brother's the muscle. My brother's name is Kyle. We started all this together. Uh, before we got into real estate in any capacity, uh, I was a regular dude, right? I was a college graduate. I went to Rutgers University in New Brunswick, triple majored, communication, human resource management, and organizational leadership. Oh, wow. Um, Impressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I shout like out to Kyle, so. too. Yeah, yeah, my bring brother, him with you. man, he <laughs> A-plus, man. You know, he's the best. Uh, the motor behind this whole thing. But I graduated from Rutgers University. I got into the uh, corporate world. I did about four years in the corporate world. Uh, as soon as I got out of school, I worked at Movado, oh. their corporate headquarters, the, the watches, yeah. in, uh, in Paramus. Paramus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I used to be invited to their uh, watch. Friends and family sale. And family, I used to yeah. run the friends and family oh, get out of here. I had the record for the most growth, gross profit in the friends and family wow, sale. Well, as of... Last time I checked. Wow, and I push your numbers even in the corporate world. Yeah, yeah, you, you know. <laughs> um, so I worked at Movado for a few years. Then I graduated. I, I went to go work corporate at a Shiseido, which yes. is the fourth largest makeup company in the world. Yes. Um, you know, office in Rutherford, office in New York. Mm -hmm. And I did that for about two years when we figured out, you know, this, this isn't really for me. Mm. Uh, and we got into real estate. But my background is very corporate. A few degrees. Yeah. Uh, and here we are. Wow, that's awesome, man. So what what made you want to get into real estate and flipping houses? So one year after, you know, in, in the corporate world, you do your annual review. Yeah. And then one year I got a 0% raise. Now, maybe I wasn't the greatest employee because it's just not, you know, we're not built that way. Yeah. Uh, but I got a 0% raise. And at that moment I said, you know what, I don't think this is really for me. Yeah, I mean, what could be more discouraging, right? Yeah. You're breaking yeah. your back for a whole year and then you, you know? get a 0% raise. Right. Like, yeah. I remember I looked at my manager and I was like, it's not like it comes out of your paycheck. All you got to do is write a little three or four. Because at the time, <laughs> a 3% raise was like, wow. Yeah. Like it was either one, two, or 3% raise. No, yeah. Inflation was definitely lower than right. what it is now. Yeah. And so a raise actually counted, right? Right. <laughs> so, um,. Didn't get the raise. That's when I, you know, I kind of looked at my brother. He was at the time studying at an NJCU, okay, uh, criminal justice of all things. Really, and um, and we looked at each other and we said, all right, you know, let's see, let's see what we can figure out. I saw the quote, you know, cliche: ninety five percent of millionaires make their money in real estate. And I said, I guess this is where we need to be. Awesome. So, what were the next steps once you figured out? Okay, this is what the wealthy does. It's real estate. Right. That same exact day, I went ahead and I and I paid for the uh, the licensing course to become a real estate agent. Okay. So you went uh, the agent route first. I went the agent route first. I figured that would be the best place to start to at least learn the lingo, at least be able to defend myself in a Absolutely. conversation yeah. with somebody who actually knows what they're doing in real estate. Mm -hmm. So that was the first thing I did. 70 hours, 72 hours or so, I got that. Um, did and you well, pass the test in first try? Yeah, yeah, I passed. Yeah, uh, first try. I mean, you're, actually, you're, you I got had to, degrees. So yeah, you're, yeah. You're a test I had guy. to do it again recently. Oh, did you? Um, now that I'm a commercial broker now. Gotcha. So maybe we'll get into that later. But oh, so now I've had to pass the test twice. Oh wow. Um, Aced it both times, right? Yeah, yeah, no <laughs> doubt. But uh, the first time around, what my brother and I used to do was when we realized that all right, we're gonna I'm gonna go ahead and make a switch. My brother, who has always been all in on anything that I've you know kind of put out there, yeah. he said, "All right, let's do it." So I used to get out of work. At, at 5, 9 to 5, I used to get out of work at 5 o'clock. And at 5.05, 5 5.10, my brother would be waiting for me at the Starbucks across the street. And what we would do is uh, we'd go into bigger pockets. Before it was like bigger pockets. Yeah, we're talking about years like ago. Like when it was just kind of starting out. Yeah. You know, uh, Brandon, the guy with the beard was still on it. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and we would assign each other, uh, ourselves articles. You know, Kyle, read this. I'm going to read this. We'd say, you know, 10, 15 minutes later, we, we'd reconvene and... All right, bro, what'd you learn? Eddie, you know, I, I, I took this from it. Okay, well, I actually got something a little bit different. I learned this, this, and this. 
And uh, it's funny, I actually still have the notebook, and we did that for maybe about a year. Oh, wow. Uh, at least four or five times a week, we'd meet at the Starbucks and just kind of learn, 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 learn for free. Oh, wow, that's awesome. So you guys were determined to learn the business and get into real estate. 100% about it. Yeah, yeah, and that's what a lot of people don't realize, right? They might see uh, EKJ now and everything that you're posting online, but they don't realize the the grind that it took, the sacrifice. You and your brother working all day, meeting up, right? learning the business just to get one foot in. Yeah, you know, it's, it, it's funny, you know, because uh, not that social media wasn't around six years ago, but it wasn't the way that it is now. Yeah. Um, you know, there are podcasts like yours that, that introduce people to different things, to, to different ways of, of making money and different entrepreneurial routes that they can take. Um, but then, you know, there's a lot of BS out there, too. Absolutely. There's a lot of BS out there, too, especially in the wholesaling world. Um, and people don't necessarily realize, you know, it takes a long time. It takes six years for us to get here. It takes a yeah. long time. It takes a lot of failure. It takes, you know, a few wins, a few losses to, yeah. to really build something. No, absolutely. And I remember when I first got into business, um, we actually did a co-wholesale together. We right. did a JV partnership. Yep. Um, you want to tell the story about yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, sure. So it was a property in Patterson. I'll yes, never forget B-town. it. It was a property in Patterson, um, you know, and, and at the, it was it was just a few of us, like, really getting after it back yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. You, you and I, we each happened to be one of them. Yeah. Um, and we were all kind of competing for the same deals. You know, they were a little bit easier to come by, and we were competing for the same deals. And I remember I thought I had the guy under contract. You know, we had verbally agreed. Uh, I'll never forget. I went to the Patterson Firehouse thinking I'm going to get documents signed. Guy never showed up. A few, maybe a few days, maybe a week or so later, I see the deal kind of making its rounds around the network, around, you know, the group of guys that were buying. And, um, and Marco had beat me to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mar- Marco had no, beat yeah. me to it. No, yeah, that's funny, man. Because I went to meet him on a Saturday. Right. Um, he's like, no, let's meet Monday or Tuesday. I'd be like, no, I'm free. Yeah. I'll come right now. <laughs> I'm like, you want to get this done? Because I can get this done for you. Like, I'll close immediately. Mm-hmm. He was like, all right, come by. Yep. Met him, built rapport, and I literally left with a contract. He signed the contract right then and there. Right. And then we started shopping the deal probably Monday, Tuesday, around there. So yep. it was already circulating. But the funny thing about it, I got it from you. Well, not got it from you, but like, whatever. I, I was the one that ended up getting under contract. Right. But we ended up closing the deal together anyways because yep. I shopped it around and, and I was new. So my buyer's list wasn't where it's at now. So you had a buyer that wanted it already. Right. So we ended up partnering yep. and closing the deal. We made a decent That's amount it. of money. Yeah, right? yeah. We, it was, I think we made like 15 grand. Yeah. Each, right. Give yep. Take. yep. 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 Yeah. So that was that was good, man. That was good. But it's funny that you mentioned that um, deals were easier to come by. Right, because it was almost like if you got a, a motivated seller on the phone, that was like your deal. Right, like you felt like it was yours. Yeah, right? I mean, I was the guy who waited until Monday. I see if I'll ever do that again. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for anybody getting into the business, if uh, you have a chance to go meet the seller, meet them immediately and try to lock up the deal. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was awesome, man. And that's since then we started, you know, networking. So, quick question: What does EKJ stand for? Yeah, absolutely, man. You know, I'm very proud of it. So, uh, my name's Eduardo. I go by Eddie. Uh, E-K is Kyle, my brother Kyle. He's a little bit younger than me. He just turned 29. And then J is for Jason. J, my brother Jason, he's pre-med at Rutgers right now. Wow, pre-med. So uh, before Kyle was even really on board, and, you know, Jason, he's still, I mean, he's not a kid anymore. He's 21 now. But yeah. before any of them were on board, I mean, I was going to name the company this no matter what. Okay. Like, this was this is what I was going to call myself regardless. Wow. But my brother, you know, thankfully, he's always, uh, you know, he's always been... My partner, number yeah. one fan, the kind of the guy holding us up. Yeah. Um, and it's cool. Yeah. So it's just me, you know, my brother and I yeah. are always, I'm the oldest of three. It's our initials. Oh, that's awesome, man. Yeah. I'm sure your parents are proud. Yeah. You know, you know it's, it's cool. They love like to that. see it. Yeah, yeah. And as the older brother, you know, holding it down for everybody else, having yeah. the vision, leading the way, and now everybody's involved. That's it. That's that's the plan, man. You know, and when I, hopefully, algún uh, day I pass it down to my son. You know, he's the water too. So oh, there you, you go. Know, he can keep it running. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome, man. Any advice that you would uh, give somebody who's getting into the business of Ab- flipping houses? Yeah, absolutely. You know, the the best advice that I can give anybody getting into the business, uh, as we do kind of in our meetings and everything, one, every every once in a while, is you know you really got to understand that that there are levels to this, um, and I feel like a lot of people don't like to accept that. You know, there are levels to it, and um, you know, for somebody really getting into the business, you really got to be boots on the ground. You know, there's an easy way to do it, and, and you know, probably like like maybe you do now, um, you know, you can get the list, and, and I know you've built out a, a comprehensive, really great team, mm-hmm. 
But the the only reason that you're able to do that is because you were boots on the ground. Absolutely. And you were meeting the sellers yeah. and on Saturdays yeah, yeah. and getting contracts signed. Mm -hmm. And you were, you know, probably driving for dollars and put up the occasional bandit sign. Yeah. Um, oh, you know, yeah, in the freezing cold. Right. With my family in the car. Right. <laughs> exactly. Know, my, my son, he was like, uh, you know, five, six at the time, pat, literally passing me the bandit sign. Uh-huh. Like, <laughs> and that was our weekend out. <laughs> you know? That was it. Yeah. You know, so so my best advice to people kind of starting out is that you got to understand that, that you can't skip that. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't skip that. You've got to kind of work through that in regards to... Uh, you know, being boots on the ground and doing things from the ground up because a lot of people think now, okay, I'm going to buy the list. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hire virtual callers. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to have them call, and then I'm also going to hire somebody to go out and do the initial meeting with the seller. Yeah. And then I'm going to hire somebody else to um, to be my transaction coordinator, I think people call them, and then, yeah. you know, they'll get it under contract. And then yeah. by the time it gets to me, you know, I hit up to it. But, you know, it's taken you five, six years. Yeah. To get here, Absolutely. to get to that point where Profit Properties is at today. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the best advice is, you know, do the stuff that nobody's doing. Driving for dollars, it sucks, man. That's Bandit good. signs sucks, <laughs> it but, sucks, but it's the only way to figure it out. How can you teach somebody yeah. to go in and, and kill it with the seller and build rapport, like you said, no, uh, when you've never done it yourself? Yeah. And, and that's a lot of what I kind of feel like we see in the industry today. Is people not willing to kind of go through. I mean, it's cool, right? I, I don't mind it. You know, yeah. do your thing, spend your money. But, you know, money doesn't replace the hustle. You can't mm. you can't trade money for hustle because that's just not how it works. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's some gold right there. And just like you were saying, social media is not what it was back in the day. Now, people just see the end product and think that right. it's just a one, two, three thing. Oh, yeah. They don't know the blood, sweat, and tears that you've put into this with your family together just to get to the point where you're at. That's you it. know, and, and just like anything else, you have to put the time to become an expert. Right. Like Kobe, you know, he was in the gym before everybody. He, he stayed after everyone. Right? right. And that's why he became who he is. Same with Jordan, all the greats. They put in the time and they become an expert in what they do because they grind. They hustle. Right. You know, they're out there getting their the, the bloody knuckles. Right. That's it. What do they say? 10,000 hours? Yeah. To become yeah. an expert. That's a long time. That is. It's a long yeah. time. It's not going to happen overnight. No. <laughs> you know, you can't. You can't. And, um... I feel like that's what we that's a lot of what we see today. Yeah, you know, that's absolutely. a lot of what we see. Yeah, and that's why I think the timing is perfect for the podcast cuz I think I'm at a level of my career, my businesses where I could actually share information that's knowledgeable and helpful and bring other people that I started with like yourself yeah. to share that same information and hopefully get uh the next generation of investors and entrepreneurs hustling. <laughs> Right? Not just spending money on AI thinking it's just going to create this huge business for <laughs> exactly. them. Like, that's not the reality. Right. You have to go in, have a vision, execute, and sacrifice to get to the place that you want to be. Correct. What's been a key to your success? As everybody knows, EKJ, uh, I have the luxury that there's two of us. Hold on. EKJ in the check-in. Yeah, EKJ checking in, checking you know, in, that's me. It so it's funny, you know, sometimes I'll be walking through the mall or, or yeah. I mean, not sometimes. It's probably happened like only like two or three times. <laughs> and I'll hear it from afar, EKJ checking in and it's somebody who's either, you know, seen something that we've done or nice. or watches our stories or whatnot. So that's always kind of cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, but the key to our success is, is you know, we, the lo we have the luxury that there's two of us. Yeah. You know, so I, I like to think I'm the brains of the operation. My brother's absolutely the muscle. Mm -hmm. um, and... And even just to kind of elaborate on that a little bit is uh, the fact that we've really been able to evolve. Mm. You know, the plan was never to be what we are today. Mm. The plan was to be what we saw online, right? Fixing flippers. We're yeah. going to go, we're going to buy a house or wholesalers. We're going to get it under contract, sell a piece of paper for $20,000. Like, who doesn't want to do that? No, absolutely. Easy as that, right? Yeah. Um, but we've really been able to evolve. So when we started, we never really had plans of becoming full-blown general contractors. Mm. But it was another property in Patterson over on Jackson where, um, you know, we just kept getting got by the contractors, for lack of a better term. They just kept getting us. Yeah. And then at one point, it was, uh, we got, we, you know, they got us for about 17 grand. Mm. And I looked at my brother, and we said, uh, you know, the only way that this is going to work is if we really get a grasp on the construction. Mm. So what we did was, with the contractors, is, uh, you know, we would make it a stipulation or a contract with them. A contingency was that, you know, we are going to be, you know, we're going to pay you as if we weren't, but we're going to absolutely be a part of the process. Mm. You know, this is, it's, we'll hire you, but you got to let us work for you. You got to let us swing the hammer. Oh, wow. You got to let us be on site every day. Yeah. So you can't come back in a week and say, hey, you know, man, it kind of sucks to work for Eddie yeah. and Kyle because they're, you know, 
they're, they're up mine all the day AC. long. <laughs> yeah. But but hey, we agreed on this that yeah. we would be here learning this with you. Yeah. So that's really how we got our start in the construction because we evolved to become contractors. Um, we've from then now, so then we went from just investors mm -hmm. to investors and contractors, mm -hmm. right? Now we do a lot of residential stuff, mm -hmm. uh, kitchens and bathrooms. Market's a little slow for us. We're, we aren't able to f find the amount of in inventory that we'd like to, to flip on our own. Yeah. Um, and, and here we are. So yeah. little did we know that getting got for yeah. again, uh, would lead to us learning the construction wow. and it's pretty much all we have to lean on now. Yeah. So we evolved to becoming general contractors for ourselves. Now we are residential contractors for, you know, anybody who needs work, a kitchen, a bath. That's how we've been kind of paying the bills really for the past few months. And while my brother's taking care of that, I've evolved into the, uh, the commercial space. So I'm, I'm actually a licensed commercial broker now. Oh, wow. Um, Cause that's where we want to go next. Yeah. Right. So my brother kind of holds it down. I'm where I'm trying to climb the ladder. Mm -hmm. And then once we get there, I pull him up and we get to it. Cause our goal moving forward is really uh, our short term goal is to really buy anything between probably six and 20 units. Nice. But it's really just about evolving, seeing what yeah. the market does. Um, you know, I roll a lot with Glenn Gallucci and Paul and them. I mean, they've seen the cycles, Yeah. but this is a first for me Yeah. and, and us. Yeah. You know, so so we're just kind of rolling with the punches, but we're absolutely, you know, open to evolving and kind of being wherever we need to be yeah. and putting in the work at every step. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've been a commercial broker for uh, probably about eight months now. I haven't done a deal yet, mm -hmm. but I'm in the office every day. Yeah. You know, I'm out here. I, I had a tour this morning at 8 o'clock in Irvington at a, day, at a daycare that we're trying to sell. Wow. Because um, it, takes, it takes long. Yeah, it's, it's a not different quick. animal. None, none of the processes are quick. There yeah. isn't a quick step to it. But we get that. We yeah. understand that now. So that we don't no need any, Yeah, we don't need anybody to teach us that anymore. Yeah, yeah. Um, wow, that's awesome. Man. So, yeah, it's all about evolution, man, and being, uh, and being willing to do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I mean, the simple fact that you guys were getting your hands dirty with your contract there. Oh, yeah. That's pretty cool. And the fact that they were willing to, like, pretty much coach you. You know, but you had it in the contract where they, they had to let you be a part of it. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. We would pay them as if we weren't. Yeah. But we were going to Home Depot and picking up material. Yeah. We, you know, we bought a truck. Clifford, you know, 3000 bucks in Irvington. It's wild walking yeah. into Irvington with 3000 in our pockets, <laughs> cash for a truck. <laughs> yeah. Um, But, but like, we, man, we, we were, we are, we were all the way about it, man. And we understood that it was going to take a while. Yeah. That's, that's interesting. Because it was, uh. Pretty much an area that you guys had no experience in. Zero. Uh, and you pivoted because of the market and the direction that the business was going. Right. And you were able to create a whole nother business from it. Yeah. Which is the contract. Which little did we know that we kept getting, you know, taken advantage by the contractors. Yeah. You know, who would have known that we, you know, do something today you'll thank yourself for later. Who would have known that four years later, five years later. Yeah. It's all we have to lean on. Yeah. Blessing in disguise, you know, call it what you like. But but we, that's another thing that we've learned is that, uh, you know, it, it's either a blessing or a lesson, you know. And, and it sounds super corny. It sounds cliche. But, you know, it, and it takes a while for you to realize sometimes. Yeah. Because yeah. at the at the moment, you lost 17 grand. Right. That's not like a hiccup. Man, this sucks. <laughs> you know, that doesn't tickle. <laughs> right. right? <laughs> yeah. But that's so important that you got to fail forward. Right. right? You got to look at the big picture. Perfectly put. And see what you have to figure out in order to get to the next place so it doesn't happen again. If you're looking to dive into the world of real estate, we have the perfect tools and resources just for you. Our carefully selected top secret document library is packed with proven documents to streamline your transactions and help you navigate the real estate market with confidence. Additionally, we offer a comprehensive wholesale 101 masterclass designed specifically for beginners. In this course, You'll learn everything you need to know about finding affordable properties, negotiating lucrative deals, and building a network of eager buyers. We're here to empower you with the knowledge and skills necessary to flourish in the real estate industry. But that's not all. The Real Estate Investor Secret Vault is your gateway to unlimited success. Our marketing matrix and calculators will assist you in making informed decisions, ensuring maximum profits effortlessly so don't miss out on this incredible opportunity to kickstart your real estate journey join us today and unlock the secrets that will propel your real estate career to new 
Heights. Log on to InvestorsVault.club and get started now. Now, let's get back to our program. Now, you mentioned uh, Paul. I know those are your lenders, correct? Yeah, Paul and Glenn. So, you know, uh, our first mentor, mm-hmm. man, turned out to be a real scumbag. Um, but we were young, blind ambition. Yeah. Didn't know any better. Um, you know, once we, it was a property right here in Bloomfield that he, uh, you know, just completely left us out to die on. Really? Um, so he helped you acquire the property? It's funny. Uh, so he, you know, we, we, we had found, found properties for him, funded the properties for him. You know, we, we made this guy a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And then after maybe a year and a half, he's like, all right, I'm going to let you guys in on one. Mm-hmm. We're like, all right, man, this is our shot. Here we are. Yeah. And, uh, and I won't say the address, but it was a three family here in Bloomfield. And what he did was he had us buy the property in our names. Personal names. Personal names. Okay. And then he had, we didn't know any better, remember. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> we didn't know new. any better back then. Got it. Um, and, and he had his own private lender. Um, and this guy, specifically, he would give you the construction draws up front. So you'd close, you know how typically you get your construction yeah. dr- uh, in draws. Yeah, in draws. Here, yeah. Marco, you, here's thing. 20, here's 20 more. Yep. No, this guy would give you all the money up front. Mm. So what he did was he had us put our names on the property. And uh, he got eighty thousand dollars on closing day up front for construction. Construction, and we never saw any of it. Yeah. And now this property is under your name. And now this property is under our name. Wow. So yeah. How'd you fail forward in that situation? Yeah. A lot of YouTube. <laughs> yeah. A lot of YouTube personal loans. Wow. We had to take out personal loans. Uh, a lot of YouTube. Um, we found one guy. His name is Durbang, and he's mm-hmm. still with us to this day. Who I don't know what he saw in us, but he believed in us and. Uh, and he worked for us for free over there, mm-hmm. and he was he kind of foreman the entire project. Wow. And t- to this day, like this, really, um, we're still together, and uh, and we were able to figure it out and get it sold. Wow! Yeah, that. Now, did actually, you make any profit on? No, that? No, nothing. You know, we we almost made uh, we we almost made about twenty grand, but uh, he ended up suing us at the end. Yeah. Get out of yeah, here. Yeah, the same guy who robbed you for your construction draw us, yeah. went back and sued you. In the operating agreement, it said, all right, when we sell, I think he was due like 15% of the profit or something. Yeah. And we said, you know, we can't do that. No, no way. No way. And uh, and he ended up, you know, it, it, it ended ugly. And we ended up, I think we walked away with maybe two or three grand after a whole year wow. of work. But you were able to pay everybody you took money from? Oh, yeah, far, yeah. Far we, from? we paid back the lenders. Yeah. Um, we paid back all our loans. That's good. And... um. We survived. Yeah. But it's funny because we did uh, kind of like an exit video of that one. Hey, listen, this is EKJ's first project that we did on our own. I'm wearing a suit. It's funny. I'm wearing a suit in the video. <laughs> yeah. A brown suit. And my brother doesn't even have the beard yet or anything. <laughs> yeah. um, Paul found us on Facebook. We posted on to pay- Facebook. Wow. Paul ended up finding us yeah. and uh, invited us into the office. And we've been with Paul and Glenn like this ever since, too. So we kind of got out of the little scammer circle that yeah. we had gotten introduced to that we embraced because it was the only people that would even talk to us. Wow. Found Paul and Glenn, and, you know, now I host meetings with them. I'm in their office. Yeah, and I've and seen we've that. Been with yeah, them ever I've since. Wow. Got, you know, one door closes, another one opens. That is the ultimate definition yeah. of, like, to describe what happened to us. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, because I know they, they pretty much fund all your deals. Everything. Right? Everything, yeah. yeah. We have no reason to go elsewhere at the beginning. Uh, and so, you know, sometimes to this day, so they, they really believed in us. They would give us a hundred percent funding. Wow. Uh, so what, why don't you explain to, uh, our listeners when it comes to like draws and dealing with a hard money lender or lenders that you've used for other projects so they get a better understanding. Yeah, absolutely. So hard money, you know, typically guys like us, especially entrepreneurs, um, we, we get we fall, we get up, but we aren't necessarily bankable. And typically the properties, you know, you smell, you smell the cat piss, you smell, you know, the uglier the property for us, you know, we smell money. Yeah, the sexier it looks. Right, <laughs> right. But, uh, but you, aren't, you aren't able to get really traditional the conventional financing on it. Mm-hmm. So that's where hard money comes in. So hard money, the, you know, there are different types of lenders, whether they be individuals or, you know, peak private lending. They happen to be, uh, I like to call them more of like a hybrid. Yeah. Um, it is, you know, these are guys that will give you the money, you know. You, 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 put, you put forth a plan. Listen, I'm going to purchase this property for X amount. Mm-hmm. I'm going to put X amount into it, and it's going to be worth X amount at the end of the day. And they say, okay, all right, we'll give you the money. We'll, we'll take on the risk with you, but it comes at a price. You know, whereas if the traditional uh, interest rate is, say, 5 6 7 8%, mm-hmm. they'll give you the money, uh, but it'll be at 10 11 12%. 
So you're paying for it. Um, they'll give you the money cash. They'll give it to you, you know, in as is condition so that you can go ahead and submit your offer. When we submit offers, we're submitting them as if it was cash because these guys move quickly enough for us to be able to do that yeah. and not necessarily get caught. Mm. Um, so hard money, you know, these are guys that will, that will lend you the money for the projects as long as you've got a true project in front of you. Um, we learned pretty early on that you can't fool yourself. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, if the numbers aren't necessarily working out, mm-hmm. all of a sudden you say, well, you know, I'm, I know the comps say 500, but but I think, you know, I think we'll get 525 for it because <laughs> we're going to do a really great job. Yeah, yeah. Or you say, uh, man, you know, I know I know that we said, you know, it was going to cost us $100,000 in rehab, but we, we can do it for 80. You know, if we if we put in a few extra weekends, we can do it for 80. So that's where we really see people getting caught yeah. when you get into the hard money. Absolutely. But it really comes down to... Uh, being honest with yourself and if you and if you're working with the good hard hard money lender they're gonna be checking you yeah and if they say hey you know marco i don't really think this is a, whether it be these guys or anybody else mm-hmm. and they say hey marco i don't think this is a really good idea man you know i, I don't really want to give you the money um then that should be as opposed to us as investors saying oh man you know screw him he doesn't know what he's talking about yeah. that should be more like a wake-up call like okay yeah marco's in the business of making money yeah. he lends money to make money um, he'd love nothing more than to take mine. Mm-hmm. If he's saying he doesn't really want to lend on it, then maybe I should rethink it. Yeah, absolutely. And I think a lot of investors get emotionally attached Correct. to the project, yeah. to the check that they're going to make, and they ignore all the red flags that are around them. Especially now that, you know, it's kind of slim pickings. Yeah. You know, you find something and, like, you're like, all right, this has got to be for me. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's important to know when to walk away uh, just as much as it is to know when to go out on a Saturday and get, <laughs> and get a con- sign. And beat somebody to the <laughs> right, punch, right? Exactly. <laughs> no, but that's awesome, man, to see that, um, you know, you built the relationship with a lender. And now you're saying they even give you 100% up front, right? Yeah, from the, they believed in us from the beginning when, yeah. when the, we had no business getting 100% financing yet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we, so we have no reason to go elsewhere, and and they give us a hundred percent finance. But we bring deals. Yeah, we bring true sixty eight, seventy, seventy two percent ARV deals to the table. Yeah, yeah, you know, and and that's why we're able to qualify for no, it. No, absolutely, man. You got to have a deal, and the market will tell you if you got a deal. You've got to have even a as deal. a wholesaler. You send it out, nobody replies. Guess what? You got Not a bad a deal. deal, bro. Right, right. If you got a good deal, it's gonna sell, and people. Are, are going to want to lend you money to get that done because they're going to make money. When you're sitting around just kind of waiting for a sucker to show up, you know, that's when you know, and it happens, right? Yeah. We get them. Yeah. Even we've wholesaled, you know, a deal or two maybe to the occasional sucker. Yeah. Um, I've always said, we do. Well, who do we compete against? Uh, we compete against people who have more money mm-hmm. and people who have less, less education than we do and less discipline. Yeah. So, uh, you know, they're both just as dangerous to our livelihood and, and what we're doing. Yeah. So, you know, the, the, the suckers are out there. But when you find yourself saying, all right, I could sell this, but only to a sucker, yeah. you know, maybe. Maybe you shouldn't. Maybe, yeah. you, sh- you know, the yeah. numbers can be, can be, can, can like, be moved. Like I have a rule of thumb. If I wouldn't flip it myself, I won't put it under contract to wholesale it. Perfectly Because what's, you know, that, that puts me in a position where I know buyers are going to want it. Right. I'm not wasting the seller's time. I'm not wasting my team's time. You know, and we're not just throwing uh you know spaghetti at the wall and seeing if it sticks exactly like, no we're, we're getting this deal we're going to send this deal and it's going to be sold and that's why we're able to our turnaround time is pretty fast you know and what a lot of people especially in the wholesaling world um you know and and, and like nobody talks about this and we all just kind of ignore it is that there's a seller in play yeah you, you're sitting in front of somebody yeah. their biggest asset likely their biggest asset which is a home we're not talking about two or three or five or even 17 or 20 grand. You know, we're talking yeah. about a few hundred thousand. Yeah. You know, you're sitting in front of this person and you're saying, hey, listen, you know, I'm going to give you X amount. I'm going to give you 300,000 for your property on December 15th. Yeah. You know, I'm going to be, we're going to be closing on that day. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, so they, they already spent, they're it. moving. They, they're, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They already got uh, know, like plans. They're putting their stuff in boxes. Absolutely. They're working on getting their stuff out. They're figuring out where they're going to go next. They're saying, yeah. okay, I'm getting 300. When? Okay. I'll, you know, I'll allocate 20 for this kid, 20 for that kid, 20 for this debt. Yeah. Um, and what you see a lot of wholesalers do is they'll put it under contract by any means necessary. Yeah. Uh, because if you do it right, we can just kind of get out. Yeah. You know, you, you, I'm sure you've got your contingencies in place, Absolutely. whether it be w- whatever they are. Yeah. Um, you, you can get out, you know, like my dad said, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. You know, you say, hey, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. And you're moving on. But, you yeah. you know, the idea is to leave these sellers specifically. And, you know, you want them to say, I'm in a better place after I met Marco or after I met Eddie and Kyle yeah. than I was before I met him. And I feel like for a long time, a lot of wholesalers weren't really considering that, yeah. that there's a whole life you know, at stake at the end of this contract. No, absolutely. And um, so it gets ugly, yeah. you know. You especially see with the ugly. new new wholesalers. Yeah. Right? Like you see that all the time where they're promising the world and not delivering. I've, I've gotten so many deals that were like, oh, I dealt with this guy. He said he could sell yeah, it. Yeah, I could I'm imagine. Stuck. I'm behind. And we actually get it done for him because it was a deal. They just didn't have the right resources to get it done. Yep. But it's just, yeah, you got to have integrity. How you do everything is how you, how you do anything is how you do everything. Correct. Right? And you have to put the seller first. You got to build rapport. Hear their story, put yourself in their story, and that's just going to give you motivation to get it done. Right. But I could tell from your website and uh, your testimonies that you do put the sellers first. We try to. Yeah. You know, it's the only way that it works. Yeah. It's the only way that it really works. And uh, and like you said, it's about kind of having integrity and, and going out there and, and, you know, doing the right thing. You know, it's no secret. Mm -hmm. Even when we're cold calling, when we are out uh, cold calling, looking for pay, we, hey, you know, we came across your property. Um just want to see if you had any plans for it or yeah. if you'd accept the cash offer on it. Um, you know, we, we try to do everything with integrity and, and, and leave them in a better place than they were before they met us. Absolutely. I remember you used to hustle, you used to handwrite letters. Yeah, right? no, we still do, man. Still to do? this day, yeah, nice, to this nice. day. So, we'll, I mean, long letters. Yeah, I remember, like, I mean, you I'm competing stack. with guys like you, you know, <laughs> so we all got to, as much, you know, we're friends, you know, and, and, and we, we, we appreciate and we love you, but, but at the same day, you know, it's like, okay, in your head, you're thinking, all right. I just assume that you're there. <laughs> you know, I assume that you're there, and, and I can really only probably name uh, probably maybe two or three other guys that I would put in our category yeah. of, you know, of guys that I really respect in, in our local market. Yeah. Um, and I just assume that you guys are getting to it, too, you yeah. know? So we I try to, to come at it from our angle. I, I remember I used to run into everybody now. until appointments. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'd be like, oh, here they go, yep. <laughs> you know? And that, yeah, that's yeah. cool, man. I mean, it's a, it's a friendly competition, right? Yeah, of iron course. Iron sharpens iron. Right, and and it's just a matter of you know do, trying trying to do the right thing. Now, does it not work out sometimes? Where I was wrong, yeah, it happens. Absolutely. I mean, we've had um, what's the saying? Uh, buyers are liars, sellers are worse. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like sometimes the seller won't disclose that there's structural damage, you know, or right. there's an oil tank, and we didn't know about that, and that changes the numbers. Right. So you know, it, it's just important for everybody to be transparent in order sure. for the deal to get done. Even working with wholesalers, a wholesaler working with the buyer, I'm super transparent with everything that's going on. Right. Because I don't want any surprises or anything to blow up at the closing table, then everybody loses. Not right. only the seller, our team for putting all the work, and the buyer has nothing to flip. Yep. You know? Exactly. Perfectly put. Yeah, man. So um, who are the three people that have been the most influential in your life? The three people who have been the most influential in my wife in my life. So, uh, Oh, my wife. You kind of said it. <laughs> She's up there, <laughs> but we're going to go top three. Uh -huh. um, man, you know, I got to give a lot of credit to Glenn. Glenn and okay. Paul over at Peak Private Lending, you know, they really, like I said, it was 208 Jefferson and Hasbro Kites, and they gave us 100% funding on it. My brother and I were just recovering from, you know, the debacle that we had over here in Bloomfield. Yeah. So, uh, you know, they're, they're a prime example of, of people that, that, that are doing the right thing, you know. So they gave us, not only did they give us 100% financing, but, but they believed in us. Mm you know, to kind of give us our first deal yeah. um, where it was just us together. Yeah. Uh, just Kyle and I, you know, out here doing it. If we win, great. If we lose, it's on us. Yeah. Um, you know, so a big shout out to Paul and Glenn over there because cause they do a lot for us. Uh, you know, my dad's a big influence in my life. You know, my dad, uh, um, as you know, Barranquilla, Colombia, you yes. know, we, my, my dad comes from Colombia. He's the, he's the oldest of seven. Uh, and he, one by one, piece by piece, brought his his parents and all his siblings to this country from Colombia. Wow. You know, so what I've learned from him is that, uh, you know, you can't necessarily judge people on, on what they've got. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't judge somebody's ac accomplishments on, on what their bank account says mm. or on, or on, you know, what they're driving or what kind of house they live in. Um, you know, because it, it really turns, it, it's really about legacy, right? Like, absolutely. It's probably a lot easier for me to go out and, and we haven't quite yet, but it, it I, I, I'm almost sure that it's a lot easier for me to go out and make a million bucks mm -hmm. than it would be for me to come to this country on my own and one by one bring eight people with me. That That's funny because my, my family's from Barranquilla, yep. also Colombia. Same thing. They brought everybody over, yep. my mom, my dad. And it's like I have trouble moving to the next town. 
Like, I don't know right. if I want to yeah. leave my comfortable <laughs> town in Bergen County. Like, they you left gym, everything the, behind. Right. They literally, like, left my sister. She was born in Columbia to come here to start everything and then bring her eventually. I can't even imagine leaving my kid, like, yeah. for a day, you know, when mm-hmm. we're gone for, like, a weekend. But, you know, our parents sacrificed all that. You know, That's a lot, man. Yeah, for sure. And then number three would be my mom. My mom, you know, she's great. She's great. She's uh she's a breast cancer survivor. Oh wow! So you know we went through that entire process together, and I learned a lot about that. Again, just about perspective. You know, uh, it's it, it, it the most influential people to me aren't going to be the people who necessarily put the most money in my pocket, or showed me the most. You know, it. I've, and as the market shifts, as I have a son now, and and I realize that everything's kind of about perspective. Mm. You know, so my mom, breast cancer survivor, hard worker her entire life. Um, you know, she's always been one of our biggest fans as well. Yeah. Um, perspective, man, you know, you, you, it, it all kind of comes down to, to what you're looking, what glasses, what scope you're looking at things from. Yeah. And, uh, you know, as long as you're looking at it from the right glass, yeah. uh, you know, er- everything again, a blessing or like corny, but a blessing or a lesson and it's the truth. Yeah. No, that's awesome, man. That's, that's good stuff there. Cause you know, your why's got to be bigger than just money. Right. Right? And right. now that you have your own family, you're realizing all the gems that your parents passed down to you, um, life situations, hurdles you had to jump, right. that now pretty much made you and your company what it is. It's almost not about the money at all. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, obviously everybody's got to get their nut. Marco, you know with your family, all right, I need to have this this much mm-hmm. per month or per year, however, you know, however you want to go ahead and put it. But it's almost not about the money at all. Um, it's almost about just kind of making just in it's, you know, you know, what you know where you got to be yeah. to be, to be comfortable, to be able to at least provide mm-hmm. mortgage, daycare, uh, trips, yeah. you know, whatever you want to, to be cool. Yeah. And then everything on top of that is really a bonus. You know, you obviously, you want to make money for your investments and we all want to be a millionaire and we all want to make a bunch of, make a bunch of money, but but um, it's really more about just kind of having the time to be able to, when one of your buddies asks you on a Tuesday or Wednesday, hey, Eddie, can you come by on Friday and support me in my podcast and uh, you do, you know, be a guest and let me introduce you to my audience. Yeah, you know what, Marco? Actually, I can. Yeah. You know, and, you know, my wife is originally from Miami. Hey, baby, you want to go to Miami and, and be with my parents for Thanksgiving? You know what? Actually, I can. Let's yeah. do it. Yeah. Um, so money, money is not you know, towards the top of the priority list at the moment. Yeah. I'd much rather be able to do other things, uh, pick up my son from daycare yes. and, and, and things along those lines. Yeah. Um, yeah. I that, get that reminder it. all the time about the freedom is really why I do it. That's it. You know, to be able to, you know, drop off and pick up my son, never right. miss a game, be there for whatever um, event our church is having or travel whenever we want or, yeah, we could do it. Yeah, yeah sure. Actually, you know? you know what? Actually, I can do it. Yeah, that, that freedom is just priceless. Right. You know? And that's what we get as entrepreneurs. But there's a lot of risk, but it's worth the risk. Were you ever in the corporate world? I was. I okay, was in the so you know, like we could we could talk because because yeah. like we've been there, and I feel like sometimes people in the corporate world, you know, friends of mine or whatever. Oh no, Eddie's just. But I've been there. Yeah, that's the only reason that I could say it. But you know, you don't have those luxuries. Yeah, no, absolutely. But we were in the corporate world, but we were hustling. Yeah, right? like oh, I yeah. was in the corporate. World. I was getting up at five a.m. Um, I would go to men's prayer five forty-five. Then I'd get home about seven a.m. Uh, get the family ready. Um, right. Go to work from eight to about four. My wife was working also. When I got out of four, pick up my kids. Then I'll spend time with them till about like six, six thirty. But right. um, my wife was already home. We'll have dinner together. And I would grind from seven to about two in the morning and do it all over again. That's it. I did that for a while before, uh, you know, I, I learned the business and got my first deal. Profit you know, properties. So. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Let's go. That's it. So where could our listeners uh, find you online? Why don't you share some? Yeah, sure. So we've actually really been building out our website. Uh, more recently, it's homecashoffernj.com. Uh, you can also find me at uh, EKJ Eddie on Instagram. Um, you know, shoot me a DM. I'm, I'm always around. Man, you know, we host our meetups as well. Everybody's always invited. Um, that's where you can find me. You know, the best chance to get to me is EKJ Eddie on Instagram. Check out our website. You know, at least anytime I see at least new viewers on there, it gets yeah. me hyped because uh, I've really been trying to grow it, you know, evergreen marketing and organically. Yeah. But you can learn a lot about us, my brother and I, what we do, how we do it, what, what you can expect from the process. And then, as you know, you know, it's always EKJ checking in on the Instagram yeah. stories. Yeah. I try to give um, I try to give people an inside view of what it is that we do on the daily. 
Uh, I know I've been ghost for the past few weeks, but it's because I don't have anything to show. So yeah. as opposed to just kind of filling it with fluff, I like to really always have some real content to put out. That's good. Um, but yeah, that's where you can find us. Awesome, man. So what's next for EKJ? Next for EKJ is kind of graduating into uh, in, into the commercial building space. Nice. By that, I mean in the short term, like I said, anything between 6 and 20 units. Okay. Um, our fix and flip business, you know, my brother's kind of got that under control mm-hmm. at the moment. Um, you know, it's, it by no means is it on autopilot like people like to think, but we've got it pretty well figured out now. So next, we're trying to graduate up until the next level. You know, as much as I'd love to say, and you hear a lot of people, you know, I want to have 200 units by the end of 2024. Yeah. <laughs> you know, no. We would like if we can maybe accumulate anywhere between 15 and 30 units next year. Yeah. It'd be a grand slam for us. Awesome, man. So I got to ask you, who's your fa- favorite Vallenato singer? Yo me de dia. Ah, oh, dale, bro. papi, dale. Yeah, yeah, that's an easy one, that's bro. That's what I'm talking about. All day. Absolutely. My mom was just in Valle Okay, that is. get out of so here. So she's got a picture with the statue. Yeah, what? yeah, it's cool. It's cool stuff. That's awesome. That's awesome, bro. But, hey, thank you for taking the time out to come here. Um, appreciate all the knowledge, all the gold that you shared. And, guys, make sure you follow him on Instagram and check out his website. All right, right until next time.